Okay, so here's uh, the week 33 lesson for ninth class about trigonometry. It's lesson one in trigonometry. Now, let's look at these two triangles. They're the same shape, but they're different sizes. So they're both right angled triangles with 30 degree angles. So the shape is the same for both, but one is bigger than the other. And the question is, how long is the missing side x? So the small triangle has uh, 30 degrees, 8 centimeters, and x. And the big triangle, still 30 degrees, still a right angled triangle. So the same basic shape, but the longest side is 12 centimeters, and we've got a side of 6 that's indicated. Now the key to this is the fact that the two triangles are similar. They're both the same shape, they both have all the same angles, and that means that the relationship or the ratios between corresponding pairs of sides is the same for both triangles. So for example, the x divided by the 8 in the small triangle should give you the same answer as the 6 divided by the 12 in the big triangle. So x over 8 equals 6 over 12. And 6 over 12 is just a half, 0 0.5. 6 divided by 12 is 0 0.5. So x divided by 8 is 0 0.5. And that should be enough information to figure out what x is. So if x divided by 8 is 0 0.5, we can multiply both sides of that by 8 to get that x is 4 centimeters. So the missing side x is 4 centimeters. And we work that out based on the fact that the 4 divided by the 8 should give you the same result as the 6 divided by the 12, because they're both basically the same triangle, except that one is a bigger version of the other one. And that's the basis of trigonometry. So any right angle triangle with a 30 degree angle in that place will give you the same result, 0.5, when you divide the opposite side, the side opposite the 30 degrees, by the longest side. The longest side is called the hypotenuse in a right angled triangle. And the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse for a particular angle is called the sine of the angle, and we can write sine, S-I-N for short, you'll see it on a calculator, S-I-N, sine of 30 equals 0.5, which means that in a 30 degree triangle, if you divide the side opposite the 30 by the longest side, you'll get 0.5. And that's true for any 30 degree right angle triangle. So on a calculator, um, what you would do is this. Different calculators might be different, for example, but on most modern calculators, you'll press the sign button first. So you'll go sign, and then usually, usually it will open the brackets for you. And then 30, and then usually you can press equals, and it will close the brackets for you, and it will tell you equals 0.5. So that's how you do that on a calculator. So for example, another triangle, find the missing side P. And it's a 50 degree triangle, and we've got the side P is opposite the 50, and the longest side, the hypotenuse of that triangle, is 9 centimeters. So we can write that P divided by 9, the opposite side divided by the longest side, the hypotenuse, should be the sine of 50. And that will be true of any 50 degree triangle. And our calculator can tell us what the sine of 50 is. So if we punch sine of 50 into a calculator, we get 0.766 and a few more decimals. So for any 50 degree triangle, right angle triangle, I should say, the opposite side divided by the longest side should give you the same answer, 0.766. So in this particular case, P divided by 9 is 0.766. And we can do a bit of algebraic manipulation with that to figure out what P is. 
So we can multiply both sides of that by 9 to get that P is 6.9 centimetres. So P equals 6.9 centimetres in this case. So here's some questions, some triangles for you to find the missing sides in. Five of them, so you might want to pause now and try and do those before looking at the answers. And after you've done that, um, you can draw the triangles to, to scale. They don't have to be exactly of that size. You can draw them like double size or half size. But if you draw the triangles, then you can check that they are working triangles and triangles with those angles and those sides do indeed uh, meet up at, at the vertices, the corners. And so they are working triangles. So you can draw the thing to make sure that your answer makes a viable working triangle. So that's end of part one. So here's part two with the answers to those questions. So the first question, you had a triangle with a 38 degree angle. Opposite the 38 was something called X that you had to figure out. And the longest side was 9. So we can write X divided by 9 equals sine 38. The opposite side divided by the longest side should always give you the same answer for a 38 degree right angled triangle. And what that answer is, is something that our calculator can tell us when we press sine 38. And when we do that, we get about 0.616. I've rounded that off. So x divided by 9 is 0.616. We can multiply both sides of that by 9 to get that x is 5.5. So in that triangle, x is 5.5 centimetres. And you can try and draw that, a triangle with 38 degrees and 5.5 centimetres high and the longest side 9 centimetres and work out and, and observe that that makes a functioning triangle. Question two, you've got 60 degrees and a missing side that I've called X again, and the longest side is 14 centimetres. So the X is opposite the 60, and we know that um, if we do the opposite side divided by the longest side, we should always get the same answer for a 60 degree triangle. So x divided by 14 is going to be the sine of 60 degrees and the answer will be the same for all 60 degree triangles. And what that answer is, is something our calculator can tell us. So we punch that in and we get about 0.866. Again, I've rounded that to three decimals, but x divided by 14 is 0.866. And I can multiply both sides of that by 14 to figure out that x is about 12.1. I've rounded that to one decimal, but 12.1. And again, you can draw that to make sure that it's a working triangle. Number three, um, same procedure again. So you've got 66 degrees and a side of what well, I've called x opposite it. And the longest side, the hypotenuse, is 10 centimetres. So x divided by 10 is going to be the sine of 66. And that works out to be 0.94 when you punch it into the calculator. So that relationship between the opposite side and the hypotenuse will always be 0.914 for any 66 degree right angle triangle. So if x divided by 10 is 0.914, then we've got to multiply both sides by 10 to figure out what x is. And, well, I've rounded it to 9.1, but obviously it's 9.1 something. But uh, 9.1 is the answer to one decimal place. And again, you can construct that triangle to show that it works and all the corners meet up. Now, question four is a bit different because the thing that we're missing is the longest side, the hypotenuse. 
So I've got 30 degrees in a right angle triangle. I've got 7 centimeters opposite the 30 this time. And then the missing side is the hypotenuse, the longest side, and I've called that h. So 7 divided by h equals sine 30. This time the thing that we're missing is on the bottom of the fraction instead of on the top. 7 divided by h is sine 30. Sine 30 is something our calculator can tell us the value of. And in fact, it's exactly a half. So 7 divided by h is a half. And this is going to take an extra uh, step in the algebra to find the h because it's a bit more complicated with it being on the bottom. Um, but because we've got that fraction where we are dividing by h, we'd like to get rid of that. And we do that by multiplying both sides by h. So if I multiply both sides by h, then the fraction just becomes 7. I've multiplied by h to cancel out the fact that I was dividing by h. But because an equation is like a balance, we have to do the same on both sides. So we also have to multiply the right-hand side by h. So 0.5 times h becomes 0.5 h. So we've got 7 divided by 0.5 h. Now, I don't want to know what 0.5 h is. I want to know what h is on its own. So I'm going to have to divide by the 0.5. So if I divide both sides by 0.5, I get the h on its own, and 7 divided by 0.5 is 14. So the answer is that h is 14. The longest side, the hypotenuse, is 14. So it did take an extra step in the algebra, and it was a bit more complicated because the missing thing was on the bottom of the fraction, but we got there on the end, in the end. And question five is much the same. We've got a 50 degree triangle, a right angled triangle. Nine centimeters is opposite the 50, and the longest side is called H again, and I'd like to work out what that is. So nine divided by H is sine 50, again with the missing value on the bottom this time, because it's the hypotenuse, it's always that the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse gives you the sine of the angle. So 9 divided by h is sine 50. Sine 50 is something that I can work out on my calculator, 0.766 more or less. So 9 divided by h is 0.766. I'd like to get rid of that h in the fraction, so I'm going to multiply both sides by h, and when I do that, the fraction uh, is just left with a 9 on its own on the left-hand side. But on the other side, on the right-hand side, I need to remember to multiply by h there as well because an equation is like a balance and you need to do the same thing both sides for it to continue to balance. So 9 equals 0.766h, or, or 0.766 times h, that means. I don't want to know what 0.766 times h is. I want to know what h is on its own. So I need to divide by the 0.766 to find out what h is on its own. So I do that and I get the h on its own. But I've got to remember to divide the left-hand side, the 9, by 0.766 as well. And when I do that, I get about 11.75. So h is 11.75. So that was uh, part two, and there'll be some more questions in part three. OK, so here's part three. And we've got one, two, three, four questions, uh, numbers six, seven, eight and nine. And uh, we'll call those homework. I will go through the ans answers to those in the next video. You have to remember that the triangles aren't drawn accurately in the diagrams, so you can't just measure what's on the screen here. I've deliberately distorted them to uh, avoid that. And also, I've turned some of the triangles around to, uh, to challenge you and, and make you think about what goes where as well. So for each of these, um, you'll have to figure out uh, which is the opposite and which is the hypotenuse and uh, some of them will have the missing value on the top, some of them will have the missing value on the bottom. And once you've done that, you can draw the triangles 
to the correct scale, not necessarily exactly the size that it is there. It could be half or double to make it fit on your paper, but you can construct the triangles to check that what you've worked out gives you proper working triangles.